Hello again and welcome back. I hope you're having a great time at your camp and I hope you're learning a lot about the Lord and I hope you're enjoying spending some time with your friends. Today we're going to look at the letter P and the word we're going to look at is pray. We can look at this word in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 and the verse simply says pray without ceasing. Have you ever wondered what it means to pray? Have you asked yourself, what does it mean to pray and why do people pray? What is prayer anyways? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to ask some questions about prayer and hopefully you'll get some answers about prayer. One of the things that we're going to talk about is what is prayer? And we're going to look at a verse, 1 John 5, 14, and it says this, And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And that is what to pray means. It, it means simply to ask. You know, when we ask our parents about something, in a way, we're praying to them. We're asking them a question. And that's what prayer is. It is asking. It, it, it is talking to God. It's asking God things. It's, it's simply talking and having a conversation with God. And in those conversations with God, we're telling him our needs, and we're also telling him the needs that others may have. And so we're having a conversation with God. Now, why should we pray? That's another thing that, that we're going to discuss today. Why should we pray? Well, Luke 18.1 talks about why we should pray. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Well, God wants us to pray to him, and he commands us to pray. So I'm going to read you this passage of scripture from Luke 18. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God or nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now, this judge, he didn't fear God. He had no regard for God. He didn't care about God. He didn't care that God says we need to be just towards God and we need to be just towards man. We need to have a fear of God because God will make sure that if you're in a position of power that you treat people right. He didn't care about that. And he also didn't care about making sure people had justice. But he didn't like the continual nagging of the woman and so finally he did the right thing. This woman was in a bind. She was being treated unfairly by an evil man. So, the parable says that we should always pray and not lose heart. And the contrast here is that even though this, this is a wicked judge and this is a just woman and she is being treated unfairly by a wicked man, if a wicked judge will do right by this woman, how much more so will a heavenly father do right by us? We should always pray. We should always pray and not lose heart. Prayer should be consistent, and we should not stop. We shouldn't just pray one time for something and just think that, okay, God's going to just bless it, and we're going to pray one time. No, we should always pray and not lose heart. Just like Jacob, when he had a request and he was wrestling with the angel of God, he grabbed hold and he said, I won't let go until you bless me. And that's the way our prayer life should be. We've got to grab hold of God and we're going to pray about this thing and not let go until God says yes or no. And that is what it means to pray without ceasing. We're going to grab hold of the thing we're praying for and we're not going to let go until God says yes or no. Okay, so what should I pray for? That's many times the question. What should I pray for? The answer is anything. Pray for anything and everything. We just always pray. So in your time with your leaders, I want you to study one passage. 
Study Matthew 6, 5 through 15 with your leaders, and then I want you to pray together. Okay? Study Matthew 6, 5 through 15, and then I want you to just pray together. Get together with your leaders and your and your 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 fellow students and pray together. Maybe some of you have a need, something that's really going on in your lives. Just pray together, okay? Until next time, may God richly bless you, my beloved.